Alright, so welcome back. So we've uh, started learning about closures and what we want to do is we just want to learn some of the, the shorthand tricks. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy uh, what we did before uh, and then just so that uh, my playground doesn't yell at me, I'm going to change it to looking for things that are uh, instead over 9. Type 10 at first there. What I mean to be looking for is things that are over 9. So things that are over 9 are the 10 and the 1000. Uh, presto it works, right? Done with this video. Well, not quite. Our goal is to to see how we can use shorthand uh, to do a, a little bit less code. So combine, if you kind of remember what this guy did, I'll just put him right uh, right below here so you can kind of remember what this guy did, um, is he received two parameters and then he returned one parameter which is the same type. Um, it can actually infer quite a bit. Um, and it actually turns out that let's say, let's say this line right here just wasn't here at all. Um, so what would we lose if this line wasn't here at all? Obviously, we'd lose the names, running total and current total, um, and we'd lose the fact that it received two ints and it outputted an int. Um, it could actually infer all that int stuff. So if you deleted this line, the only thing you'd be missing is the word running total and the, and the word current total. So if we could find another way uh, to access those parameters, um, we wouldn't need those lines. And what they've done is they've uh, built in to where you can say, for the, for the first parameter, dollar sign zero, so where I used to have said running total, I can just put in a dollar sign zero. And then where the second one uh, was, you could actually put in a dollar sign one. And so you can see that these dollar sign zero, dollar sign ones, they, they again, they kind of look, you know, cryptic-y, um, but they save us quite a bit. They save us uh, that entire signature line, right? So we just got rid of that signature line, which is kind of cool. Another thing you can do, um, th there's all kinds of little shortcuts, is you can actually um, remove the return as well, um, and you'll get what's called an implicit return. Personally, I don't like that one. I, d I don't know why. Like I, yeah, sure, I type six less characters, but my code feels a little less readable. Um, it's starting to get pretty bad, right? I mean, if somebody didn't know this language, they would say, hey, learn Swift, here's what it looks like. And they'd be like, ah. Um, so I actually dislike that one. I like to say return. So that's a trick I choose not to use. There is a trick I do kind of like to use though, and that's called a trailing closure. So whenever you call a function and the last thing you pass to it was a closure, you have an option of actually like finishing the function uh, and then passing in the closure, which I know is a little weird. So it's kind of like you, you close the function um, and then you actually wrote, wrote the closure after. Why on earth would you do this? Uh, it's because trailing closures are really handy, they're really common, and sometimes they get big, right? Um, and it actually will help you out just kind of <laughs> in terms of indenting, if nothing else, uh, without having to get like too deep if you have a closure and a closure and a closure. So trailing closures is something you could use if you would like. I kind of like that one. Um, another thing I wanted to do with you just kind of real quickly is actually using a closure uh, within a closure. So a closure, the concept, is having a variable that's kind of outside the function, referenced inside the function. That's what closure means. Uh, and so let's go ahead and use a Swift closure to create a closure. So what I'm gonna do, kind of continuing with this example, is I'm going to make a function uh, called num values over limit. So I'm just gonna make a function called num values over limit. It's going to receive the array, which I'm just gonna choose to call values. Uh, and then the way the syntax on array is you put the thing that the array is about uh, in brackets. So that's an array of ints. And then I'm going to also pass in a limit, uh, which is just going to be an int as well. Uh, and then I'm going to return the number uh, that are actually over that value. Uh, just for giggles, uh, just because I feel like it, I'm going to choose the uh, to make an external name. Uh, I'm going to make it the same as the internal name, so I'm going to put a dollar sign. And so my goal here is I'm going to return um, basically what we used to be returning earlier. So that's like I'm going to return essentially the nine. So I'm going to just create a uh, closure uh, using, so values, I happen to name my array the same, uh, reduce starting with zero, uh, but instead of hard coding nine, I'm gonna actually say uh, greater than limit. And so what this is going to do is this is going to let me pass in a value. So here you can see I've passed in a value of 5 uh, as the limit, and that exists on the outer function. Uh, and then I'm actually using it inside the inner function. Uh, so this is the concept of making a variable closure. 
Uh, so closure has been around for a long time. Uh, they're, they're very handy. To be honest, this closure concept is one of the main reasons that passing in functions is so powerful, uh, which is why, of course, Swift decided to use the name closures uh, for, for their you know, passing in functions syntax, right? Uh, so pretty simple concept. If you wanted to use it uh, some more times, you could. Uh, but I couldn't talk about closures without actually making a closure. All right, that's it for this time. I've said the word closure as much as I can handle. I'll see you next time.